Hi, my name is Shoma Jurgensen, and I'm going to talk to you today about presenting and presenting well. But you might ask yourself, why? Why do I have to present? Right? I've been learning about writing. I've been learning about working in teams. I've even done a poetry, or not a poetry slam, but I've done a presentation slam, a brand slam. What is it about presenting that is magical? And you read in your readings this week about the importance of both listening and speaking in your professional lives. How the more we rely on things like texts and Facebook and LinkedIn, the more rare skills like one-on-one -on -one presenting become. All right? Small group and larger group communication. So we're gonna talk about the process and I'm going to do a demonstration with you. Now this is one of those um, pieces of fact, something that's taken as fact, that um, we don't really know where this came from, but one of the top three fears, right, before death comes presenting in public. All right, so why is it so scary, and why am I talking to you about it? Well, I've been presenting since I was nine years old, right, in fourth grade, third, fourth grade in Canada, where, which is where I grew up, uh, we started with our first speech, and in fourth grade, I was one of the top presenters in the class. I went to what um, the school competition, I beat everyone in the school. I went to what you would consider state in Canada, we call provincials. I went to provincials um, at the age of nine. I've been speaking publicly ever since. So how could I possibly understand the fear that you're going through when you have to stand up and present to others? Well, just like I ask you to step out of your comfort zone to grow professionally, I do the same. I may speak well in front of others, but I get really nervous when I sing in front of others. I sing in a band at church, and when I have to solo, I get a lot of the same symptoms that you do when you have to speak, right? My hands get a little sweaty, my chest gets a little tight. It's hard to sing when your chest gets tight, by the way, right? Get a little shaky, all right? But I put myself in that situation because I know it gives me an opportunity to grow. And that's one of the reasons that we focus on it in this course, because professional communications, a lot of it is about Now, one of the, another thing that I say, Josh brought up something that I say often in classes, is foresight is cheaper than hindsight. I typically say that in business law because there are numerical, uh, um, there are numerical consequences. There's money as a consequence if you don't have foresight. That can be true in speaking as well. But as you looked at your ineffective and effective columns, you notice that Preparation or foresight is one of the best ways to stay in the effective column. Okay, so we're going to talk about how do you do that. Okay. Planning is how you do that. Okay. First, you want to understand who your audience is. Now the textbook went into demographics and psychographics. This is the most important thing for you to remember when it comes to audience analysis. The most important thing for you to remember when it comes to audience analysis. Know who your audience is and what they want. What will help them be better, perform better, feel better. That is where your audience analysis should begin. What will make them feel more confident if they're unsure? What will make them feel like they can be successful if they feel they are not, or they have an opportunity to be so? That is the most important thing about preparing to plan your presentation. But that's not it. As you prepare, you also need to be, um, you need to be more organized. All right, um, you wanna make sure, oh yes, like house plans, like house plans that you have a foundation and you build on that foundation because um, you don't wanna look stupid. So, because you wanna make sure that people know that you're professional, all right? And um, credibility is important in that um, what's next? Let me see. Oh no, okay. And so, you also, you also want to support what you're saying. 
And when I was in school, my teacher said that um, I have to do research, but APA is really hard. And so um, I think I'd rather just tell stories. And stories work well for me. When I tell stories, people really like to listen. Okay. Um, and I don't know where I'm supposed to find this research, but Google is really Google is really how I research. And um, oh, shoot, hold on. Wait. Okay. I got it. Um, okay. So that's how you prepare. And oh, you're still doing good. Okay. Thank you, Tommy. Part. That's the funny part. You're still doing that's, a good job. That's really nice of you, Tommy. And I, Tommy and I, like, we went to like McDonald's yesterday. It was really cool. Okay. <laughs> now, practice is really important too, because oh, my teacher tells this awesome story about practicing. Okay, so if you're a boxer, you're not gonna in the boxing ring. You're not gonna box bags, right? <laughs> that's weird. So you're not gonna box bags. You're going to um, actually talk about stuff, but it's important to practice so that when it's time to um, um, do the actual thing, you're ready. Okay. Um, all right. I'm just a little bit nervous. Okay. I'm going to start that part over. Okay. So the other part. Um, okay. Oh. So when you deliver your presentation it's really important that you've practiced because then you know how long it's going to take. Because some instructors want you to talk for like 10 to 15 minutes. And um, I don't know, it's like a really long time. And sometimes um, you might have to slow down or speed up. Um, and so practicing helps you do that. And then it's time to present. And presenting is hard, but at least you have your PowerPoint, okay? And you can have stuff up. Now, it's important that you know how to use the computer. And sometimes it's, it's good if you, um, it's not good to sit here and click because then people can't see you. So it's good that you get someone to click for you. All right, and try not to put too much words on the board. I think this guy has too many, I don't know what an ROI is, but it, there's, there's too many words up on there that people won't pay attention to. So there's something called a rule of seven that there's gonna be a video about this week and you're gonna see. And clip art, Shoma doesn't like clip art. But, okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, and then Shoma also doesn't like a lot of animation because, um, the, the focus is supposed to be on you, and I really am not used to that, but that's kind of what presenting is for, so that you can feel confident and stuff. And so, um, so we're gonna talk about this assignment in a minute, but I just want to summarize for you. So, you don't wanna present, but it's important that you do, and you should think ahead and plan for your audience. You should prepare by organization, credibility, support with analogy. You should practice verbal cues, nonverbal cues, and delivery. Only then use technology, rule of seven, no clip art, um, conservative animation, and present with confidence. Thank you.